In the Thin and Light laptop market, there's always been this great debate between the battery saving benefits of integrated graphics or the raw performance uplift of a lower end or entry level discrete GPU. And to settle that, we've partnered with AMD and Lenovo for this video. Now, with the introduction of the Ryzen AI series processors with up to 12 cores and 24 threads alongside the built-in Radeon 800M GPUs, AMD blurred the line between integrated and discrete graphics even more. They're offering tons of processing horsepower, super impressive frame rates, and some of the best battery life around. And that's something rare for this generation of Copilot Plus PCs. So now there's a whole new generation of GPUs rolling out with NVIDIA's entry-level RTX 5050. Now, this is something that we'll see as an option in a whole range of thin and lights and budget gaming laptops. And yes, even laptops rocking AMD's Ryzen AI series. And that's where things get really interesting since we have one of the first RTX 5050 laptops. And so this is the IdeaPad Pro 5, which is one of the first few that initially is gonna come in both flavors as a less expensive version with integrated graphics and one that's got the RTX 5050 GPU along with a few other upgrades. And that makes it a laptop which can easily be adapted to your needs. But the question that I'm trying to answer here is, is the price of a discrete GPU worth it? But the first thing that I need to mention here is that even though we're gonna be going to test these laptops in an apples to apples comparison, that's not the reality that you'll encounter when specking out an IdeaPad Pro 5. That's because the RTX 5050 will be tied at the hip to a Ryzen AI7 or AI9 365 CPU, half terabyte of storage and a 16 inch form factor, whereas the integrated version starts at a Ryzen 5 and half terabyte of storage alongside a 14 inch screen. It can also be optioned to the one that we have over here, which has a Ryzen AI7 350, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 16 inch screen, and a one terabyte SSD. But at the same time, it doesn't really give us a true perspective about how the RTX 5050 fares against the best integrated graphics we've tested so far, or something you might be upgrading from. So these are the laptops that we're testing it against, including the ones that was given to us by AMD for their initial Ryzen AI series rollout last year. Now I'm aware that this isn't really a fair comparison. It'll be a cakewalk for the discrete GPU in some performance metrics, but in the more budget focused thin and light category where the IdeaPad Pro 5 plays, things like battery life, noise, and price, they play a bigger role than gaming frame rates. It's more about what works best for your workflow. So let's get right into this, starting with the most important thing of any laptop, battery life. So let's start with the good stuff. Even though the IdeaPad Pro 5 is a 16 inch laptop, it gets by far the absolute best battery life we've ever seen from a Windows laptop, even with the RTX 5050. It gets decent numbers, but still, if you're looking for a laptop that will last you multiple days of light load combined with local or streaming video playback, then it's just hard to argue against what we're seeing here. Now, the ironic thing here is that it seems like NVIDIA has found a bit of a secret sauce here for the RTX 5000 series GPU, since at least in this case, the 5050 makes a lot less impact than I thought it would. You're still trimming a lot off the overall battery life though, especially when the discrete GPU video acceleration block gets enabled in local and streamed video scenarios. Meanwhile, in a heavier task like gaming, it isn't even close we saw that coming. The 5050 is designed to deliver good gaming performance even when on battery, and it naturally chugs back a lot more power than the IGP. And speaking of power, even though the IdeaPad 5 Pro comes from one of Lenovo's most budget-focused series, they're still feeding the processor and GPU with a good amount of juice. Even with 80 watts running through it, we can't expect NVIDIA's entry-level GPUs to perform miracles, but it is still good to see. I should also mention that this is a bit below Lenovo's official maximum of 90 watts for the GPU, but that's likely because the GPU will behave a bit differently from one game to the next. So while our Cyberpunk 2077 test might not bring it to peak input power, other games could. And that power translates into some pretty interesting 3D Mark scores in our testing, with the IdeaPad Pro 5 getting good numbers for both its integrated and discrete options. I mean, the Ryzen AI7 350's IGP is never gonna compete with a discrete GPU, but it isn't meant to. The ironic thing is that it's still fed with enough power that it can still provide more than adequate performance in these synthetic benchmarks, while also coming within 15% of the higher wattage AI9 365 
in a much more expensive laptop. Meanwhile, the RTX 5050 is what you'd expect, an improvement, and yes, sometimes a huge step forward against the RTX 3050, especially in things like ray tracing. Now, moving on to gaming and yeah, I know this was a foregone conclusion with the IdeaPad Pro 5's RTX 5050 being much faster than the integrated solutions here. Yes, even the 890M, but its advantages over the RTX 3050, I think those are a bit less extreme. So in games that rely a bit more on CPU horsepower, it's 15 to 20% faster, which really isn't all that impressive when you consider there's two generations separating these GPUs. On the other hand, it has a comparatively huge advantage in almost every other situation, and it can pull ahead by up to 50% if you play titles that are optimized for NVIDIA's newest architecture. And with integrated graphics, well, IGPs have come a long way with the revised RDNA 3.5 architecture in the Ryzen AI series. Even something like the IdeaPad 5 Pro's Ryzen AI 7 350 can deliver good enough frame rates for casual gamers in eSport titles and other popular games. And if you want to play something a bit more demanding, there's upscaling technologies like FSR that'll boost frame rates. But look, unless we're talking about something unique like AMD's Ryzen AI Max series, the integrated versus discrete conversation will always boil down to getting playable frame rates versus the ability to turn up the in-game details to much higher levels. And for a whole lot of people, that will probably be the integrated graphics option. It can get console level performance in a lot of cases. And like we saw in the other tests, it just sips back power. Honestly, these IGPs have come a long way and they shouldn't be ignored if you want to do some light gaming. I guess the biggest determining factor will be what's right for your needs. And we also have to remember that there's that pro word in the IdeaPad Pro's five name. And that means it's also supposed to target more professional tasks like creator workloads or GPU rendering. And in Blender, at least, the impact of the RTX 5050 is pretty significant, but the integrated graphics also post some pretty good numbers, all things considered. If you are looking for that balance of efficiency and overall performance, it's certainly an option. And remember, for those multitasking workloads, you still have access to the Ryzen AI series' big stock of processing threads. And video conversion sees an even narrower gap between entry-level discrete GPUs and IGPs, which might be due to all of the evolutions AMD's baked into their Ryzen AI series media engines. Honestly, I was expecting the RTX 5050 to just run away from this one, but it didn't. On the other hand, if you're using an NLE like Premiere or Resolve, then you'll want to absolutely want to go with the RTX 5050 option here. While something like the 890, 880M or 860M can absolutely work in a pinch, you'll be faced with a lot longer rendering output times. Even the RTX 3050 struggled to even come close to the 5050 here, but that's likely due to the evolutions NVIDIA's packed into their new NVENC engines. I should also point out that moving to a discrete GPU can also make a day and night difference in timeline performance. If you're editing huge 4K video files on the go, then you absolutely need to go that route. But it's also important to remember that these are thinner, lighter, and more portable laptops that we're comparing here. Um, they aren't meant to be editing workstations. The last thing that I want to talk about is the effect of the discrete card on the overall temperatures, because even with an entry level GPU like the RTX 5050, it can add a significant amount of heat to a system that would normally just have a processor with its IGP. And while the RTX 5050 might give the IdeaPad Pro 5 an edge in performance, there's a trade off in both heat and fan noise. Luckily, even with the GPU running at 80 watts, this thing is still relatively quiet. I mean, it doesn't sound like a jet engine like some other laptops, but going with the Ryzen AI 7 350 by itself and using an 860M for graphics makes a world of a difference. Even under full load, the system is cooler, it's quieter, and just a whole lot easier to live with. But just keep in mind that you'll be sacrificing on the performance side to get it. But let's have a listen to what I'm talking about. In terms of exterior temperatures, they react the same way. They're higher on the DGPU option, but the IdeaPad still stays relatively cool to the touch, especially in the main typing zones. Again, though, if you're particularly sensitive to surface heat, 
I still think the IGP option is the way to go. And to put this into perspective, Lenovo was able to achieve those numbers on a laptop that's about 16 millimeters thin. So it's not like they're throwing portability into the wind like a lot of other mid-range laptops. It can easily fit in your backpack and it weighs less than 1.7 kilos or 3.9 pounds, all without sacrificing build quality uh, or even the keyboard throw distance, uh, which actually has been increased on this generation of the IdeaPad Pro series uh, to 1.5 millimeters instead of 1.3 millimeters on the previous gen. I feel like in a lot of ways, this is like 60% of the Yoga Pro 9i we looked at recently, rather than a much less expensive device like what the previous generation looked like overall. The other thing that changed with this generation of the IdeaPad Pro 5, like with so many other 2025 laptops, is the display. So for starters, at least for the price, this thing gets a 2.8K OLED display with 120 hertz variable refresh rate. So that means you're gonna get those inky blacks and the vibrancy is just dialed to 11. It covers 100% of the P3 color gamut and it has a Delta E rating of about 1.06. And the peak SDR brightness performance is really good. Uh, we got close to 520 nits on our sample, which is pretty amazing for an OLED panel. And you have to remember that this option is gonna be available on the base model as well. The only thing to look out for is the PWM flicker rate since OLEDs tend to perform worse at lower brightness output and this laptop is not an exception. In this case, it starts to become a concern once you go below 70% of brightness, though everyone has a different sensitivity to this. So what does that tell us about the IdeaPad Pro 5? I think the word I'm looking for is adaptable because this laptop can pretty much do most of the tasks. It's affordable, it's compact, it's pretty powerful, that delivers insane battery life with the Ryzen AI 7 350 and the integrated graphics. And if you're willing to sacrifice some of that time away from a charger for a huge boost in creator workloads and gaming, then the RTX 5050 option is available as well. And like I said before, it all depends on what you want to do with your laptop and how much you're willing to spend. But at least Lenovo gives you both options. And I'm kind of glad that they do. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.